sacrifice to support President Trump and America. This morning is full of surprises. Since President Trump took office, the relations between China and the United States got worse and this is why this move is very unusual to us. China made a step forward and made a massive announcement in support of America against North Korea. They just decided to carry out United Nations sanctions that were imposed on North Korea earlier this month. Khan's Nation reports that this isn't the only thing. President Trump was on his way to Washington this morning to order an investigation into China's trade practice. This could lead the United States to impose their own sanctions on Beijing. President Trump has sought help from China because they have the capability to apply massive financial pressure on North Korea if they wanted to. However, in the recent months, he has gotten less help from China not more, which is what led him to the trade probe. He was highly critical of China during the election but softened his tone when reaching the White House. Trump also tweeted this morning that he is officially the president is back in Washington. The president planned on giving us this information first but China's Commerce Ministry on Monday has officially announced that all imports of coal, iron ore, lead concentrates and ore, lead and seafood from North Korea would be banned. Meanwhile, Khan's nation says that U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley, called it the single largest economic sanctions passage against Pyongyang. However, she went on to give a warning to other council members stating, We should not fool ourselves into thinking we have solved the problem, not even close. China's step is very significant not only for America but to the whole world. North Korea is threatening the world and has been for too long. Special sanctions like this one, need to be provided often. Franklin Graham Discovers Easy Way to Stop Next Charlottesville and America Better Listen Up Franklin Graham, president of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, went after the politicians who rushed to blame President Donald Trump for the violence that erupted in Charlottesville, Virginia over the weekend. The nation has been rocked by the violence as we watched it splashed across the TV's sets of every home in the nation. Advertisement we are for sure better than this and while Trump's face is a diverse lot it is irresponsible for him to be blamed for everything that happens in America. He is an easy target but this is a bit much don't you think? Three people were killed and 35 injured after protests by white supremacists and counter demonstrations went bad fast. Advertisement The young woman crushed by a car is a national tragedy but so are the other two deaths. Cops flying to the scene to help with crowd control. All senseless deaths and Graham is calling out politicians for rushing to blame Trump because he knows who is really behind the attacks and he has no problem saying so. Really, this boils down to evil in people's hearts, Graham said. Satan is behind it all. He wants division, he wants unrest, he wants violence and hatred. He's the enemy of peace and unity. I denounce bigotry and racism of every form, be it black, white or any other. Graham then called on the nation to come together and turn to God. We are stronger together, and our answers lie in turning to God, Graham said, continue to pray for peace and for all those impacted by Saturday's tragedies. Graham posted his call for sanity on Facebook. Shame on the politicians who are trying to push blame on President Trump for what happened in Hash Charlottesville, Virginia. That's absurd. What about the politicians such as the city council who voted to remove a memorial that had been in place since 1924, regardless of the possible repercussions? How about the city politicians who issued the permit for the lawful demonstration to defend the statue? And why didn't the mayor or the governor see that a powder keg was about to explode and stop it before it got started? Instead they want to blame President Donald J. Trump for everything. Really, this boils down to evil in people's hearts. Satan is behind it all. Breaking Trump wins as North Korea cancels attack on Guam North Korea recently threatened to attack the U.S. island territory Guam which is located in the western Pacific. 
In a response to this threat, the U.S. President Donald Trump said North Korea will meet fire and fury if they continue with their threats. However it appears that the North Korean leader changed his mind as he continues watching the U.S. actions. The South Korean President Moon Jae-in also wants to prevent the war. Kim Jong-un inspected his army on Monday. His strategy is to launch missiles near Guam, according to reports. Newsmax reports, he said that if the Yankees persist in their extremely dangerous reckless actions on the Korean peninsula and in its vicinity, testing the self-restraint of the DPRK, the latter will make an important decision as it already declared, the report said. The DPRK stands for North Korea's official name, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. President Trump said that the U.S. military is more than ready to defend our country and territory. This came as a response to Pyongyang's plan to attack Guam. However, Moon Jae-in said that the South Korean government is determined to prevent the military actions. Newsmax reports, military action on the Korean peninsula can only be decided by South Korea and no one else can decide to take military action without the consent of South Korea, Moon said in a speech to commemorate the anniversary of the nation's liberation from Japanese military rule in 1945. The government, putting everything on the line will block war by all means, Moon said. The Liberation Day holiday is celebrated on the Korean Peninsula and it will be followed next week by joint U.S.-South Korean military drills in order to anger North Korea. While South Korea is an ally of the United States, the North Korea's main ally is China. North Korea has a weapons program and China urged them to stop it. They also urged the USA and South Korea to stop military drills in order to lower tensions. The drill will definitely provoke Pyongyang more, and Pyongyang is expected to make a more radical response, the paper said in an editorial. If South Korea really wants no war on the Korean peninsula, it should try to stop this military exercise, Newsmax reports. The United States and South Korea have been at war with North Korea ever since the Korean conflict in the 1950s which didn't end with a peace treaty. U.S. is fully prepared to respond militarily if North Korea decides to attack. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis said on Monday the U.S. military would know the trajectory of a missile fired from North Korea within moments and would take it out if it looked like it would hit the U.S. Pacific territory. The bottom line is, we will defend the country from an attack, for us, U.S. military, that is war, Mattis said, Newsmax reports. Japan is also an ally of the United States. The Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said that Japan will stand with its allies against North Korea. Trump talked with Abe on the telephone and both of them agreed that stopping North Korea is a top priority. It appears that Kim Jong-un got a little bit scared. If he launches an attack to our territory or our mainland, we are more than ready to take him down. Not only we have South Korea and Japan on our side, but Australia and New Zealand are our allies as well. You better watch out North Korea. Kendi Rice breaks her silence, gives liberals devastating history lesson. Former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice is a smart woman and is admired around the world. She is accomplished and an excellent representation of the best of what America stands for. So when she talks people, even liberals, tend to actually listen. Advertisement Which is so rare these days, to have people actually listen to one another rather than shout at each other. She went on Fox and Friends yesterday morning to push her new book, Democracy stories from the long road to freedom. She does not shy away from America's past, the good and the bad, which includes slavery and the Civil War. Co-host Brian Kilmeade asked her straight away. I want to talk about where your book starts, and that's our Constitution. As an African-American woman, do you see yourself in this Constitution? Do you think that? When we look at nine of our first twelve presidents as slave owners, should we start taking their statues down and say, we're embarrassed by you? In a word, no, Rice said before continuing. Advertisement 
I am a firm believer in keep your history before you. So I don't actually want to rename things that were named for slave owners. I want us to have to look at those names, and realize what they did, and be able to tell our kids what they did and for them to have a sense of their own history. Rice is senior fellow at the Stanford School of Business, then gave the liberals an important history lesson. When you start wiping out your history, sanitizing your history to make you feel better? It's a bad thing. She noted that her ancestors were originally counted as three-fifths of a man, and recounted what her father went through just trying to register to vote in Birmingham, Alabama in 1952. She retold a story from 2005 when she stood in the Ben Franklin Room of the State Department and was administered an oath of office by a Jewish woman Supreme Court Justice, that's the story of America, she said before concluding with. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and other slave owners were people of their times. What we should celebrate is that from the Jeffersons and the Washingtons as slave owners. Look at where we are now. Mike Ditka discovers easy way to make every NFL player. Iron Mike Ditka suffers no fools. He is the former hard-nosed coach of the Chicago Bears, a two-time Super Bowl champion, and two-time NFL Coach of the Year. He ran a tight ship and famously came back to work in a few weeks after a heart attack. Advertisement And this was years ago, without recent medical advancements. He was being interviewed about the NFL and the topic, of course, came around to the scandalous behavior of the still unemployed Colin Kaepernick and the total malcontent Marshawn Lynch who have both gone out of their way to disgrace America. Ditka has the right solution and every single coach in the NFL should listen and do exactly what he says. Advertisement If so we would stop this problem dead in its tracks. Listen up guys because literally your careers hang in the balance. Ditka said. Well, here's the thing. When we live in a society that pays attention to athletes, say, as greatly as they do to Kaepernick, then we're foolish. I mean, athletes' opinions are no different than anybody else's, they're no more significant than anybody else's. They're no more important than anybody else's. Kaepernick would be an unknown a complete unknown, nobody would know who he was, without the game of football, without the sport he's playing. And not to respect that, you've got to be a pretty unintelligent person, I would think. Because I don't care what your preferences are, you can have anything you want to. But what he has was given to him by the game of football. I think it's important to me that some of these young people playing the game start giving something back to the game and respect the game the way it should be respected instead of acting like a bunch of fools out there. Radio host, no doubt about it. Hypothetically, Coach Ditka's on the sidelines and one of his players takes a knee during the national anthem, what happens to the player in that case? Ditka, he doesn't play for me ever again, 